Welcome to this first instructional tutorial video for the interactive documentary software Klimt. Today I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction to the software, I'm going to guide you through the basic functions it has to offer, uh, and we're going to look at setting up a basic screen in Klimt. First thing we need to do is get the Klimt software open. If you don't already have it downloaded, you can download it from Klimt.net. We're going to come to that website in a minute. I've already got it downloaded, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to my dock down the bottom here and I'm going to click on Klimt. Okay, so let me just go full screen. First thing we need to do when we're working with Clint is we need to log in. So if you haven't already got a username and password, you're going to have to go and get one. And you can get one from uh, clint.net or you can just click on this create a new account link down the bottom of the screen down here. So I'm going to click on create a new account and that'll take me to clint.net and you can do the quick register now option. So if I clicked on that, I'd have to go through, put in all the usual details to create an account. You're going to need this account to use Clint, so you have to do it. You can't use Clint without creating this account. Thankfully, I've already got an account, so all I have to do, put in my details. Obviously, not going to tell you my password here. Hopefully, I can remember it. Click on this little I understand and accept Clint's terms of use. You can go in and read that if you want. And I'm going to click on get started. Okay, and we're in. So this is the first window you're going to see when you enter Clint. And basically what you can see here is we can see um, my projects. So any projects you've already made will live in this window here and you can access them from here. We've also got an open existing project window. So if you need to browse to open your project, from um, a place where it's saved, maybe on a hard drive or something like that, um, you can open it from here. We'll come back to where Clint saves later on um, in this tutorial. For now, I'm just gonna get on and open a new project. So what I'm gonna do is click on this little button here that says new. So I click on that button and what happens is uh, a create new project dialog window appears. In here, we have um, some different details we have to enter before setting up our new project. So these kind of details um, serve two purposes when it comes to Clint. First purpose they serve is we're gonna name our project so obviously we can find it ourselves. Everything you save onto a computer has to have a name that's recognizable by you. So that's kind of the first function of this create new project window. Second function and kind of where this becomes important is um, for SEO, search engine optimization. When you've finished with your Clint project, it's gonna export the HTML website a website you can upload to the internet when you're done. It's going to sit on a server that you upload it to and you're going to want an audience to be able to find your work. So what you have to think about when you're filling in your project details here is think about the keywords that people are going to put into search engines to find your interactive documentary. For this example today I'm going to create this documentary that's looking at the freegan lifestyle. I'm going to give my project the title Bin Appetit. So one of the things freegans do is they uh, look in the bins of big supermarkets for any food waste they can take and use. So that's why my title is Bin Appetit. It's kind of supposed to be a clever title. Doesn't do much for SEO. So what I'm gonna do in my subtitle, I'm gonna write a very descriptive explanation of what my documentary is about. An interactive documentary. I'm hoping if people search for interactive documentary, you know, this is going to help my documentary come up when I upload it online. Uh, an interactive documentary exploring. Let's keep it quite brief. So an interactive documentary exploring freeganism. And underneath this, I can write a kind of longer um, description of what my documentary is about. Uh, so I'm going to put in a description here, explore the world of freeganism in this um, immersive interactive documentary. I'm trying to sell my documentary here as well uh, as thinking about search engine optimization. Explore the world of freeganism in this immersive interactive documentary. Um, I invite you to spend some time There's my description written. Next thing I'm gonna do is put in some tags. Again, 
when I'm putting in tags, I'm thinking about SEO. So I'm thinking about the words people are going to put into search engines to find this documentary. I'm going to start off with some very broad terms and I'm going to put in interactive documentary. I'm going to put in IDOC, which is basically another term for the interactive documentary. I'm going to put in my name because people might search for me as the director of this documentary. And then finally, I'm going to list some of the kind of key themes and subjects from my documentary. So I'm going to put Freegan, uh, I'm going to put food waste, uh, I'm going to put lifestyle. Okay, so that'll do. We don't need to go crazy with the tags there. We've got our project title, our directory. So this is the folder basically in which it's going to be saved. Again, I'm going to come back to where Clint saves a bit later on when we've finished our first example. Uh, we've got our subtitle, our description, and our tags. Final couple of things we need to sort out before we actually create our project. The player dimensions and whether we want our project to be responsive. Okay, so let's look at player dimensions first. The player is basically when you open up your Clint project, how does the browser window look? And we've got our player dimensions here, aspect ratio of 16.9. If you've not come across the aspect ratio of 16 by 9 before, this is a kind of standard video aspect ratio. It's kind of high def video. And if your documentary is going to be mainly containing video, you're going to want your aspect ratio to recognize this. 16 by 9 is the, the default aspect ratio in Clint, and it's the one I would usually advise you sticking to unless you've got a specific reason to change it. So unless you've got a really specific reason for going to 3.2 or a more custom aspect ratio, I'd always stick with a 16.9. And in fact, what Clint does is it quite nicely sets you up with a project size here that's kind of a nice project um, size to be working with. So you've got a width of 970 and a height of 545. So this is probably going to be good for your videos when you start to import them in. And we'll look at video sizes and compression uh, in a later tutorial. Okay, so we've got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure this enable responsive mode down the bottom of our create new project dialog window is ticked. So if you don't know what responsiveness is when it comes to online, responsiveness is when your website or your web content adapts to the, to the window it's showing in. For your Clint project, you're going to want it to work when it's displayed in a browser window on a desktop, you're going to want it to work on iPad or mobile phone, you're going to want it to work on a big screen, on a smaller screen. So you're going to want to think about responsiveness when you're making your interactive documentary. Again, I would always advise having this ticked unless you've got a specific reason not to have it ticked. Responsiveness in Clint can be a little bit difficult, takes a little bit of time. Again, we'll look at that in a later workshop. We'll touch on it briefly today, um, but we'll have a look at it in a kind of deeper context later on. So for now, we're going to make sure this is ticked and we're going to click Create. Okay, so here we have our project. We can see at the top where our project is saved. It's saved into my Documents folder, a folder called Clint version 3, to a folder called Bin Appetit. Again, I'll come back to this later. And we have a few workspaces basically in Clint. What we have is we have this workspace here where you can currently see this home sequence. This is called our storyboard. Okay, so this is where we basically build the structure of our interactive documentary. And again, it will become more apparent how this works when we start to use Clint. The top of Clint, we've got some buttons to take you into the preferences. Again, we'll come back to these later. On the left hand side, you have your media tab. So this is where all your media will be stored when you import it in. Down the bottom of our storyboard down here, we have an add new sequence button. So if we want to add new sequences, we can just click on this. And up the top, we have some basic menus. So we have a Clint menu, a file menu, an edit menu, a view menu, a project menu, and this question mark menu. So the first thing you should notice about Clint is it isn't a massive software. In Clint, we've only got these options along the top and these couple of workspaces. So it's quite simple in terms of using Clint. And as we go through, we're going to look at how we can use it to the best of its abilities to get a good product out of the end. But it's not going to take a great deal of time to learn all you need to know about Clint. 